Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I want to share with you how to sell to boomers. Now boomers, these are our golden generation. So between the ages of, you could say 55 plus, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105, the older generation. Now, the beautiful thing about the boomers is that there are just so many of them. So if you don't know the history, essentially after the World Wars, after the Second World War, there was a whole boom of births and I guess euphoria after the wars and, and a lot of soldiers coming back from war and just a lot of babies being born, a lot of lovemaking taking place. And, and we have a whole generation of, of people now who are conscious of their mortality. So let me write that here, mortality. So when I say mortality, obviously it's not just about living long or avoiding dying early, but it's having a quality of life as well. So quality of life. And obviously as you age, the body deteriorates and illnesses can occur. So you, uh, so you speak to these boomers, there's certain, uh, the, the, the typical triangle of medications are high blood pressure medication, we have cholesterol, and then a lot of times uh, A1C, or medication for diabetes. These are the golden three that you will typically hear when you speak to boomers. You're gonna hear at least one of these. Oh, for, oh, let's say you speak to 100 people, 50 are gonna be taking one of these medications, especially in America. It's like the doctors love to give them that. Ah, yeah, take some high blood pressure medication, take some metformin, take some, uh, I've even known, that. I need to actually do some research on the names, but all I know is that uh, there's a lot of medications being given out. The pharmaceutical industry is huge, it's so much money. Maybe one day I'll own a pharmacy or a drug company, who knows, um, like that. Oh, who was that guy? There was a guy that was famous for selling like a HIV medication and made millions by hiking the price and then not going to prison. He bought like the Wu-Tang CD, like the only CD made or something, some, some guy that was, was worldwide hated. Anyway, I'm, I'm diverging here. But anyway, so boomers have health problems. So they are an easy sell in a sense because there are so many, there's a lot at stake and if you can speak to them and get on their level, there is endless opportunities here. Now, to get access to boomers, chances are you're going to do it within another offer. Like, I don't know how many boomers I could attract myself with my image and my brand. It's probably not going to work. So, thankfully, there's a lot of companies that sell to boomers. If you can get with one, that's going to be fantastic. But essentially, you want to sell the benefits of a quality of life as they age. That's huge. No one wants to be stuck in a chair. No one wants to be of such ill health. They just have to be stuck in a TV, watching TV all day, or just sleeping, or not doing anything with their life, or needing personal care. Like, that is huge. Like, maintaining independence is so huge. Like, the last thing these people want, boomers want, is to be living in a, in a I guess, a elder living facility or having personal care or having their family burden their kids, burden their wife or their husband, burden, they don't want to be a burden to society. They want to be, I guess, contributing, independent, doing what they want to do. And the thing is, they're not going to say this. Very rare do people say this, but through your selling skills, through your words, you can throw it out there. Like I love suggestive questions. I love suggestive questions. Especially now, like I know that in this game of sales, I've still got so much more to learn. And eventually I'll get to the point where I can craft questions to get those answers from them. But until that point, um, someone, uh, Tanner Chidester, he's actually a, a fitness or business coach, fitness business coach. He had a video, on, he's got a sales video on YouTube where he talks about if you're not that skilled, then you kind of have to just kind of string them along. Like, you want to do this? You want to do that? Okay, okay. I wouldn't go as blatant as that, but I might say something as, Okay, yeah, so when I'm talking about their goals, so I might ask them, what does life look like once they lose these 20, 30 pounds, um, get their energy back, what, is, what changes? And I might say something like, oh yeah, I'll just feel more comfortable in my clothes, I feel better, I have more energy to do the things I want, contribute to my church, X, Y, Z. And I might say something like, okay, of course, of course. And, 
And um, do you feel like that would you know, improve your quality of life? You, you losing these 30 pounds, you think that would, that would make a difference in that aspect? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and I might say something like, yeah, because obviously, you know, living long is great, you know, there's no reason why you, you're still a, you're still a spring chicken, I like to say that, you, you, there's no reason why you can't live to 100. At the same time, you want to live to a quality 100 as well, where you're not relying on um, personal care or having others look after you. Like, yeah, of course, you, is that, and I might just say something like that, or like, is that, is that, is that part of the reason for doing this as well? Like, wanting to make a change? It's like longevity is something that crosses your mind as well. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, it's very important. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> and then you can elaborate on that or just kind of take that as what it is. Again, I'm still getting better. And part of me doing these videos is actually gonna improve my skill as well, so. Um, but yeah, definitely independence is something huge for them. And yeah, no one wants to be in hospital. Imagine your last years, I mean, I've heard some horror stories. I actually worked in a care home one of my first jobs out of university. And it was shocking to see like these 50 and 60 year olds struggling. Like it just smelled dusty and the food would give you the runs and it was just a horrible environment. Imagine putting your parent in that. You're a savage for that still. But um, yeah, even just to die ill is, is horrible. Even my boy, his father-in-law was dying and he was just stuck in the bed and Apparently he was a man of great strength and power and just disease just took him over and he just became a shadow of himself. So that's something. Another thing I've noticed, uh, mental health is important as well. So memory loss. So you get a lot of clients who are interested in uh, the keto way of eating because their, their brains are kind of going in terms of their memory. You've got things like Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, again, horror stories. There's a lot of hell that these people are trying to avoid and it's going to happen to all of us. So, you know, it's not a laughing matter because, you know, we're all going to age. But at the same time, if you have this in your mind, like you're a step ahead of the game. It's like chess. Like if you can see 100 moves ahead, then you're always going to be in a power position. So you can craft your questions backwards based on the data that you want them to say out loud because when they say it, they believe it versus when you say it, it's almost like you're trying to convince them and sell them. So you want, want them to really say, say it themselves. And that's the thing, you wanna really understand your avatar so closely. An easy shortcut I had for this is just to read your company's marketing material. Because that will have all the points that, that, will, uh, that appeals to them. That's why they bought whatever they've bought or that's why they've clicked on the ad or that's why they've dictated some interest. So if you can go through those materials, understand it, uh, some of these sales videos, especially from these marketing legends, I don't know who they are, but they're geniuses. They make the prospect watch a like 20, 30 minute video before buying. They talk about not only what they can do, but they talk about, they, they have like an actor, act out like a horrible scenario. Or like, oh yeah, I was playing at my, I was at my, my grandson Johnny's baseball event and uh, it was his birthday and then I had a diabetic coma and I, I collapsed and I thought I was going to die and I ruined his whole birthday and he was crying and, and he came to my bedside and he was like, granddaddy, are you, are you going to be around for my next birthday? And then, and then I felt so bad and, and my life was flashed before my eyes and I felt so ashamed of what I did and, and these people are literally watching this, forced to watch this and they're just feeling the same emotions, it's absolute magic. And that's all sales is, any sales you do is emotion. It's just emotion, it's energy and motion. At the end, you just have, you just, you just gotta take your wallet out and, and, and just pay for something, get, just pay for, to get something solved. It's like even I was in church the other day and there was this uh, charity called uh, Compassion UK and the message was so moving of like the, the hero's journey. It's like the Lion King where things are going well and then disaster happens, you lose everything, struggling, and then they have hope and then maybe another disaster happens and then there's more hope and at the end it's like a glorious ending of like bravo, bravo. And you're just so moved that you just can't help but like try and take your wallet, take your wallet out and pay for something. And that's essentially what we're doing. So yeah, so on one end, they wanna live long, they wanna avoid the ill health feel better and uh, once you understand this, it's gonna be a lot easier to sell. You're gonna connect with them more, not even about selling, you'll just understand them more. As I say, if you can, if you sound like the person that understands them and their problem better than them, then they see you as the solution. And that's the thing, even if you don't sell everyone, cause you're not gonna sell everyone, but the more you can have these conversations, the more the other person feels like you can get them, the more they trust you as well. And you even have people thanking you on the phone. That's the thing, 
I mean, the only flip side is that if you take them on this real roller coaster and you slap on a price, you know, they might get a bit hurt. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. You know, if, you, if you've really connected with them and then, you know, they, they can feel a little bit bitter that, yeah, now you are, you only, you only did that to get my money. But, you know, that's the way it goes at the end of the day. Um, you're not just selling the money, you're selling commitment to change. So let's say they go somewhere else and they do make the change, then it's a job still well done. And eventually you're going to do enough of these, you're going to, you're going to get so good that more people are going to end up buying than don't. And you're going to get paid handsomely for it and you're going to improve as a person and as a communicator as well. So that concludes this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe as well, leave a comment in terms of your thoughts. If you uh, have any ideas for the next video I should do, if you're selling to boomers or what ideas you have on that. And uh, I guess I'll catch you on the next one.